official, the stock market is officially a reality TV show. Everything that could go wrong has, but stocks are approaching all time highs. So what in the world should you do right now? I'll answer those questions and more for you right now. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we will talk about three more huge red flags that are just bad. Why the stock market is now a reality TV show and the two options I'm considering right now. And if you like making money and are looking to learn and invest alongside a guy with a crooked head and a group of really cool kids who, I don't know if they have a crooked head or not, they might, but I do, go ahead and subscribe, hit that little notifications bell, and while you're down there, go and give the video a like as well. There you go, no complaining about the smile down in the comment section, guys. Now before we even get started with all this, just remember this is for entertainment purposes only. In a previous video, I already laid out for you why I feel a second crash of some sort is coming. I'll link it at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around until then so you don't have to search for it. It'll just pop up right on the screen right there at the very end. I don't want to repeat that video here again. And thankfully, this market is the gift that keeps on giving. So I don't have to repeat any of those points like other guys do. Because there are three more huge ominous signs that the market is about to turn down. So we're going to talk about those. And we'll also discuss why the stock market is essentially an episode of the Kardashians now. And at the end, I'll lay out the two options that I'm considering right now as I prepare. So I guess this is sort of my uh, Empire Strikes Back version of my crash video. And I really hope it's better than my first one too. But before we get rolling too far, make sure you smash that like button as these type videos tend to get a lot of hate from people who, you know, only want to believe in fairy tales or whatever they believe in. So I would appreciate all of you hitting the like button right now so it gets those guys pushed out and we can overrun the haters that are out there, just the people that just want to be negative to be negative. The first ominous sign I'm seeing, corporate balance sheets are just trash. I can nerd out with the best of all of them with all kinds of technical charts and graphs and all this other pretty stuff like that. But we don't have to do that now. All those companies have reported their first quarter earnings and it shows that corporate balance sheets are just trash right now. For every company that has benefited from this illness situation, and there's not a lot, there are hundreds more that have been devastated. I mean devastated by all this. Just because a company took out a line of credit at 12% to get through this does not mean that the balance sheet is good. Those cash infusions are just lipstick on a pig at this point. And if lipstick's your thing, great, not a problem. But I'm interested in what's underneath. And what's underneath is ugly. Profits were down significantly across the board in the first quarter. And remember, that quarter the US was open and it was business as usual for the first two, two and a half months of the three months before everything went into lockdown. So how is the second quarter gonna look with most companies completely shut down all of April, a good chunk of May, and many states aren't even 50% open now and we're in June. And I don't think there's a single state that is 100% open all the way around, is there? Comment down below if there is, but I don't think there is one. So how can stocks be at an all-time high when balance sheets are just trash? It makes no sense. The second big red flag I see, banks are continuing to reduce their lending. For those of you that don't know, the entire US economy is a debt-based economy. From corporate America to the average person, our lives and economy revolve around debt. The Fed has provided record and I mean trillions of dollars record amount of liquidity to the banks. But they have reduced lending across the board. It started with mortgages. They really tightened up guidelines for home loans. You need a higher credit score now than you did before, and they're being much stricter on the income requirements. It's much harder now to get a home loan than it was just two months ago. Banks have also reduced credit cards. They have been reducing people's available credit at a time when people are using it more than ever. And wait and see what happens when you try applying for one right now. Even if you get approved, you're still not getting the same credit limit you were prior to all this. But now we're seeing it's even bleeding into auto loans. Wells Fargo announced they are reducing loans to independent dealerships. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if this expands as we move forward. So we have a debt-based economy and lending is continuing to trend down, not up. And the market is near all-time highs. Come on, at some point in time, this is just fantasy land at its finest. 
And the third huge red flag I see, tensions within the US and with China. The protest and tensions in the US are having an effect on the economy. How much remains to be seen, I'm not gonna speculate on that. But that is a great unknown right now that could potentially weigh on the economy. The only thing that I do know is some businesses had reopened, are now closed again, or they have reduced their hours down. When will these businesses reopen and come off the reduced hours? No one knows at this point. Nothing is certain, but it is a concern along with the rising tensions with China. It's not just domestic, it's with our biggest trade partner as well. Now let me be very clear up front. Both countries need each other. Both economies would suffer devastating economic losses if this really goes south. No, I don't care who has more to lose. Doesn't matter. It's not like China is Venezuela or some country like that where if trade lines broke down completely, it would just be a minor blip in the US economy at best. That's not how it works with China at all. This would be huge for the US and the stock sitting in a very precarious position right now. Either of these situations could be the catalyst that sends investor money out of stocks for a little while and, you know, causing a crash. Why the stock market is now a reality TV show. If it wasn't clear before, it should be absolutely crystal clear this week. When markets rise like it did on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, forget about the run-up prior to all that, just Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, something good must have happened, right? But the opposite happened, and the market is still riding high on absolutely nothing. So let me sum up for you guys how the market is acting right now. Bad news means the stock market is moving up. Good news means the stock market is moving up. Rumors are moving the stock market up. If the sun comes up in the morning, stocks are going up. The only way to explain it is that this is a reality TV show and that is how everybody is trading right now. And I'm sorry if you're one of the poor souls that thinks reality TV isn't scripted and it's actually real. When you watch Too Hot to Handle on Netflix or The Jersey Shore or whatever your you know reality TV show you like is, it's scripted. Sorry if I just bursted your bubble. I did it last year to someone very close to me who thought HGTV's reality shows were real. They're not. Now in my last video that I've linked at the end, everything that's going on in there and those five things are absolutely completely true. But let's just pretend like they weren't. Let's pretend like that stuff isn't happening. We don't have record unemployment or anything else like that. Doesn't happen, doesn't exist. And let's just look at the three things we just talked about. And there's no way stocks should be near an all time high. The stock market should be down a minimum of 10%, maybe even 20%. But nope, we're at all time highs. This is literally madness at this point. And unfortunately, it's given rise to the geniuses in the chat room who are all billionaires out there. And to make matters worse, as the market goes up, these chat room warriors get more and more emboldened and more and more people fall into their trap. And then I look at the big dogs, the big players who are basically sitting this rally out, which makes it even more amazing. How are guys like Warren Buffett and a bunch of other mega rich billionaires sitting out and the stock market continues to rise? So who is putting money in the market right now if those other huge investors are not? I think we are all speculating it's somehow related to the Fed. I think we all kind of think that. But it's also retail investors, you know, you and I, that are making up the biggest share of the stock market we've had in a long time. Pension funds and insurance companies and public funds that typically pay for pensions at the local level also, FOMO buying is at an all-time high. Every day I hear, Is it too late? I'll never be able to buy this cheap again. I literally get that question a hundred times a day. But it's all FOMO induced. No fundamental analysis, no plan or strategy. Just FOMO. The link to our FOMO group is down in the description if you need help with that. And I made a couple of FOMO videos that I'll link at the end of this video. But FOMO is out of control at this point. So what does all this mean? It means you need to make sure you are subscribed so you can cut through all the noise like my subscribers can. Hey, my subscribers are awesome. We are the new cool kids in school and everyone is invited this time. Oh, you, you're the market, yeah. Okay, in regards to the market, it means that if it comes down, the people like you and I who need those pensions and retail investors like you and I will get crushed. Then the billionaire investors who are all sitting on the sidelines with large amounts of capital will swoop in, pick up pieces for pennies on the dollar, and then double or triple the net worth in a few years. So what can you do about it? There are ways to combat this, 
But let's cover what I'm doing right now. Two options I am considering doing right now. So given everything I just laid out, what should you do? There are many options out there and I encourage all of you to plan for it. Even if you don't think it will happen, there is nothing wrong with being ready. But for me personally, just me, I am personally considering two different options. The first option I am considering, and you should too, is to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, that's right, I like my own videos. Sorry, you can call me sad, pathetic, whatever, but I do it and I enjoy it, it makes me feel good. Okay, for the real first option, I'm going to just hold through the dip and pull more cash and wait and see. Look, I know even if I think it's going down, I cannot time the market. No one can, not the greatest investor ever, not any of the pros, nobody can do it. But I'm a long-term buy and hold investor, so I'll just hold and continue to pull up cash until I see an opportunity I wanna buy in. If it goes up or flattens, no big deal. I'll just continue buying stocks using my normal strategies, and I basically took a breather for a few months. Long-term, it won't be a big deal. So I have no reason to sell regardless. Others might have a reason to sell, but that just doesn't fit my strategy personally. Now the other option I'm considering is taking profits from some of my frothier investments. And then I'll use that cash to expand my cash position until we get some sense of normalcy or whatever you wanna call it now. I have a few gross stocks that I feel are just too overvalued. Now I'm not gonna sell all of my shares of those gross stocks, but I may lock in some profits and see if I can find an opportunity elsewhere. You may feel your stocks have more room to run, so you may wanna hold out on selling any of your positions. Or you may feel like they're all way too high and they can't get any higher, so you need to sell. That's completely up to you. Do the analysis, see if it meets your goals and strategy, and execute. These two options meet all of my objectives, goals and strategies, and I've already done the analysis. So that is what I am doing, but make sure you are prepared just in case. So the next thing you need to do is click these videos right here to get the data behind why I see a crash coming and for help with FOMO. Thanks.